Hello, Froggy here, and today we'll be revisiting some places in King's Fall. The first time I did this it was very inconvenient, but with grapple flying things were a lot easier. Of course, first we're going to need to get past the entrance. You can do this with two people. On the right side you're going to need someone on a warlock. You just go out the invisible bridge, jump melee, jump melee, and a melee and an Icarus dash will get you over the last part. And then you just need to dunk at the same time as your ally more or less and you're good to go. The left side is a bit more straightforward. You can do this on any class, although Warlock is a bit easier because when you don't do this jump quite right, you can just Icarus dash and make it all the way. My buddy over there is on a hunter, so that's probably not going to go well. But just do that a few times and you'll be good to go. Once you clear the enemies, the portal will open and it's time to get to the out of mapping. Well, after this brief section, I would recommend having three guardians for this route. One will hold the auto res for the jumping puzzle, another will act as a anchor point for changing characters, and the last will run the majority of the route, although everyone can make it in the end. For this part, I like to be on Titan. We'll be sword flying across the gap. It's very important that you don't touch the starting ship. Although, once you're crossing for the auto res, definitely do. I'm grappling to get a little bit of extra height, but judging by that turn back, that was entirely uncalled for, so maybe don't do that. Do make sure you stay above those lights, though. If you tip below the ceiling of this upcoming little area, you'll trigger the green barrier and while that doesn't end the run, it does mean you're going to have to have people forwards to stand on plates and it's just easier to avoid. Drop your height around here to avoid a kill barrier and we've made it across. For the record, around here is where you would trigger the auto res, so don't cross that as the auto res team until you're ready. Back during Thunderdome, we had to stasis climb and then Z climb up this. But with grapple. Oh. Seems that earlier grapple has messed me up again. Alrighty then. Like I was saying, we can grapple fly up this instead, which is much faster. There is one downside. And that's that this tube is very green, so it is pretty easy to mess up with your grapple here. But on the plus side, you do end up in this nice mesmerizing green chamber to kill the time, so I guess it could be worse. I'm actually going to show a little bit of a different grapple climbing here. Instead of catapult lift, I'm going to switch to strafe because that doesn't have the same sort of jump ceiling. Which means that if we jump at the end of the grapple, we'll continue going up. I generally don't recommend doing this because it is pretty easy to mess it up. Especially if you plan on chaining it into sword flying. But it is a lot faster. Once again, I'm grappling and then hitting space, going into the menu, swapping, and getting the next grapple off before the jump runs out. Which I just failed to do. But the previous point stays around for a bit, so now you can really see how I just keep gliding up in between these. Since before it was kind of getting hidden by being in the menu. Anyways, time to hit the next load. If you want, you can race the door. 
I recommend having Eager Edge for that. And we made it through. Unfortunately, we need to be on either a Warlock or a Hunter for this part. So that was completely pointless. The spawn point is back here, so you either need to race the door again, or just do a fallback. Doesn't matter if you run out of ammo, because there is a flag right on the other side of that door. The standard pattern should do nicely. And we're through. I don't actually need ammo for any of this, but... Eager Edge does cut off a little bit of running. Even if you don't really do the whole skating thing. Just giving myself a fighting lion to help die a bit faster, but... I guess with this area doing constant damage, it doesn't matter much. I would line up with this tiny feature here, because we're going to be doing a res breach. You just slide into this wall and walk across. You should be good to go. If it doesn't work, I would go back to the middle of the room to reset your spawn points so you can try again. Ah, got it first try, even though it has been a good while since I've done that one. Glad that point exclusion zone stuff works so well. We're getting close to the reason I've swapped back to Warlock here. Getting into the Golgoroth area is kind of tricky because there is a push barrier in between us and it. But luckily it's one that we can blink through. On Hunter you could use the uh, stasis super to push yourself through as well, but that would mean waiting for the super. And while we do have a flag, blink makes for much faster retrying. Like shoot or walk back and forth to kind of mark the spot in the sand and does sometimes take a few tries and I am out of practice with this. There we go. Now let's get rid of that blink. Eh, I like this helmet better. So, you can't really join in Golgoroth Cellar because of the way the loads work. So we're going to have to go all the way through it before we can swap back to Titan. Technically, with grapple flying, you don't really need to swap at all, but... Titan is going to make everything a whole lot faster, so I would highly recommend it. I want to jump against this to safely load into Golgoroth Cellar. There's also something you can do with a hub IRB if you're doing it with two people on that route. You can check back on the Thunderdome video if you want to see the details there. Our only job at this point is to hit Threshold, and that'll be the last we need out of Warlocks. Just jump up onto the Blight and you'll find yourself in Transept. And now it's Titan time. Keep in mind that you'll join in the same zone that the fire team leader is in, so make sure the right person is lead before you join. We can just skip across this area. It's not too bad to do normally or just sword fly past, but it can be tricky if you have a cat on your lap that is trying to knot you for more affection. Unfortunately, I have but two hands, but my wrist can double as a chin scratcher. With the cat placated, you can continue through that intangible hole. Very convenient for that's there.
With grapple, jumping up here is also a lot easier. Don't have to do any heat rising shenanigans or stasis climbing. We can just go straight for the door. We don't need to go too far in here. Pretty much anywhere will work for our IRB point. But it is important, of course, that we don't die until we hit the IRB. Or we'll have to go set our spawn again. And now it's time to go back to Basilica. It's not particularly difficult, but... There is the whole thing where your view is very distorted and there are some moving parts, so... I would take your time with this bit here. Now would be a good time for your partner back in Portico to jump on the ship and start setting up for the auto res. Once again, make sure you stop before you go into the final hallway so that you can wait for the forward team to be in position. Speaking of that, you'll want to make a right here. This blight makes for a great stepping stone to cross to the other side. And the other roughly marks where well, you can hit the load. Just gotta zip back through Golgoroth's cellar. The upper area is definitely a lot easier to avoid getting lost on, so I would prioritize getting to there. Just like in Thunderdome, we're going to be going around the right here to die to the load. You'll want to kind of hug the wall. There is this little bit that you have to kind of scoot around, but if you Keep on walking here, you will most likely die. And now Team Autorez can do their thing. If you fail to die to that load, you'll need to go back and hit Golgoroth Cellar again. If you're doing that after the Autorez has been triggered, be extra careful. Apparently Grapple can set off the encounter, so just try not to shoot or anything. For our first stop on our tour, we'll be heading out to a small ping-pong table-like artifact, similar to the one we found in Deepstone Crypt. It's about a kilometer away from the platform we started on. It's pretty small. We could just barely see a pixel when we went to investigate it during the Thunderdome times. I'm jumping because I don't want to do that flight in reverse. Yeah, let's head back. That should spawn us back on the starting platform. Before we go further forwards, there are these neat little lantern things down here. There are some other minor artifacts in this direction, but you'd have to fly a good deal forwards to see them, and... Also, I think they have their own box pull, which is kind of weird and not something I want to mess with right now. Anyways, let's get going forwards. Our next destination is about two kilometers away, so we're going to want to do pretty much everything we can to save on ammo. Including taking a break at this good old archway. Going to regen ammo. And since we're doing that a lot in this video, might as well give a reminder, low ammo while alive, set your max ammo high when dead, and you'll slowly regain ammo. Because I was almost full, I only had to do it once there. Now let's head on up. We want to get above the box barrier of the place in front of us. And that should about do it. 
We can use our super to extend our flight distance. After that, we're going to just be doing some standard eager edge flying. Regular sword flying will give you an eager edge every other swing. That can extend your flight distance by quite a bit. Of course, you can also take advantage of the melee to buy extra time. And that will give you an eager swing each time, although only for three. Keep in mind that your melee does recharge from the super as well. We're getting close to our little checkpoint stop. It's a bit of terrain that I am quite amused by. I don't know, I think it kind of looks like an Amogus. I don't know, I think the uh, resemblance is pretty striking. It's also made of this weird sort of mud stuff. It moves a little bit if you stare at it. Anyways, might as well regen some ammo here before we go to the main attraction. And back to full. Uh... Well, that's all sorts of unfortunate. I guess you can't actually set a spawn point there. Anyways, now we do not have the luxury of our super. So we're going to have to bring out the big guns. First, we gotta make sure our height is good to go. Let's see how high we've gotten. Alright, that was way overkill, but the plus side is that, that will work. Getting the melees out of the way, and uh, turns out if you do two short bursts, you can get an eager out of every swing. This is a lot trickier, though. It's easy to accidentally use too much jump, so... Definitely practice before you try to pull it off in a route. It definitely blows away all the other sword flying techniques I've tried as far as efficiency goes. So I would definitely recommend putting in the time to learn to do it. We're getting closer to the orb now and you may have noticed that my ammo isn't that much lower than when I made it to the Amogus terrain. And that's without the benefit of a super. You may have noticed that on that route I was also doing a little bit of the double eager flying, so the ammo count would be even closer if I hadn't been. Anyways, this orb is amazing. I have no idea what it's for. I imagine it must have been something in D1, but the D1 people I've talked to about it do not recognize it, so let me know if you have any idea what this thing is. It's pretty mesmerizing. Let's get a cleaner view of that. It's been long enough that I don't think it's going to play a role in the revamped King's Fall. But it is definitely worth a look here. Even if you do have to sword fly for like two kilometers to get here. But still, much better than when we had to z-climb for it. But yeah, uh, very nice to be able to make it to this shattered orb in a revamped raid. Totally not salty about not being able to make it to Clodo's Oversoul, but, you know, this is spherical, basically the same thing. But yeah, it is just wild to look at this, kind of like auroras wrapping around the entire thing. It is 
An effect I have not seen in this game before. But yeah, if you do know what this is, I would love to hear about it in the comments. And if because you don't have to see Climb do it, I can in good conscience recommend making the trip out here yourself. Well, we're circling this orb. I might as well rant a bit about our quotas over soul woes. We haven't managed to break the box there due to some weird mechanics around first encounter with all the turn backs and IRB ghosts kind of moving back even if we do manage to die to the load. And to get to the oversoul we're going to need to die to the bridge transition load and that one is particularly tricky. The only way I would see doing that is a stasis finisher breach and you only get one chance per first encounter clear because you gotta do the finisher during first encounter and use the auto res to get back alive outside and then you would need to hit the load in such a way to die with an IRB point set somewhere and then you'd need another auto res so good luck with that anyways good luck with this